All right, we'll get started with two classwork problems today. So two rational equations for you to solve there at your seats. You can use the back side of your homework handout or put it there in your notes. It's up to you. But take about the next uh, three or four minutes to work on these two problems solving for K and G. He's got them. Audrey's got them. finished. Take about 30 seconds longer to be finishing up yourselves. take a look at these together. Pencils down even if you're not finished. Um, the first equation, pretty easy LCD class. 24. Well, well, we could use 24. It wouldn't work. You'd get the right answer. I like littler numbers because I'm lazy, so I would go 12, but it's not like it won't work with a 24. If you did a 12, though, class, it would cancel to give you a 3. 3, which, Brandon, you'd have to distribute to get 6k minus 9. And then here the 12 and the 6, of course, would cancel class to give us a, which we would distribute, Maddie, to get. And then the 12s would cancel cleanly just to leave us Genesis with a. One thing to watch for, we didn't see it here, would be a negative, right? So make sure we would distribute a negative properly. It didn't happen in this particular problem. We'll combine our like terms, Kendall, and these as well. And then, Michael, you got to move it to 5 over. We must move it to 5K over to get a 3. 3K. 3K. Then you got to move the 7 over to create a 9. 
and therefore k doth equal three in pursuit. How many hath a three for thine answer on the first if problem? Yeah. All right, perfect. Excellent. Let's just move on to the next problem. And uh, Audrey, um, we see polynomial denominators, which of course means it's going to be harder than the last one. And uh, with polynomial denominators, I said do one of two things. Factor or group. What do we do to g squared negative 1? We factor. We factor. We don't cancel the g squared class because we never cancel terms. terms. We only cancel factors. But we can factor it into. G plus 1. And um, this g negative 1, I should simply group in the g positive 1 group as well. And we all should have been able to see the same least common denominator pretty clearly here, Abby. G plus 1 go to g plus 1, g minus 1. And so, of course, when I multiply the g plus 1, g minus 1 here, everything cancels away, and I'm just left with g squared. G squared. But Brandon, on the next one, the g minus 1 is going to cancel with this g minus 1, but I still have the g plus 1, which needs to be multiplied by this g plus 1 to get g squared plus cg plus 1. And then uh, for the next one, obviously, the g plus 1 is going to cancel with the g plus 1, but I still have a g minus 1, which, what am I going to have to multiply by the g minus 1, Maddie? Mm -hmm. Well, not just a 3, but a mm -hmm. negative 3 to be distributed to end up with... Mm -hmm. There we go. How many did catch the positive 3 at the end? Even if you didn't do it in that same step, but you caught the positive 3 questions. All right, from here, Genesis, we can the, uh, and also combine, which will give me initially what? A negative 1g. And I really hate negatives, but if I were to take this negative 1g and move it over here, I would end up with a positive 1g is equal to 4. And there's my answer to the second one. So for the first one, k equals 3. And then for the second one, g equals 4. Those who made it that far, how many had g equals 4? Okay, only Audrey and Brandon. Okay, how many of you, it was the positive 3 that got you at the end? Watch for that, okay? Questions, comments on either of these? I managed to get 5 on the second one, so... Um. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, questions? Any questions on this? All right, let's take a look at some more word problems. And um, drag the... Screen over here. All right, so as so we take a look at this first problem, go ahead and read it for us, Kendall. And Kendall, how many unknowns do we have in the problem? Um, one. Just one, right? It's, it's just a single number that we're solving for in class. I said if you've only got one unknown, really the entire word problem is just algebraic representation. Let's try that again. Class, if we have only one unknown, the whole word problem really is just algebraic representation. The same would be true for a series of consecutive numbers because they're memorized unknowns, and that's really all we're doing here. So it's, when it says what number, Kendall, we might represent that x. And then it says added to, so of course we're going to put plus. This is 0 0.04 of itself. What does of mean, class? Multiply. So I want to show point zero four of, and what is itself talking about, Kendall? Um, Little English class here. Itself. itself is referring to what? It's a reflexive pronoun that refers to what antecedent? <laughs> no. no. Anyone? The number, right? What number? There's your antecedent. Added to 0 0.04 of itself, that reflects back to the number. So 0 0.04 of itself means 0 0.04 times of x itself. So I should write. There we go. What number added to 0 0.04 of itself, or four hundredths of itself, equals 46.8? Questions on how to set up a word problem like this one. Does it make sense now if we didn't see it before? At your seats, solve. Sound hmm? you get to do sound uh, in your head, you can whoop, whoop, as you need to. <laughs> Life is better with sound effects. It's true.
Just don't forget to boink, boink on the very first term as well, right? calculator do this one. Uh, what do we get when we divide here? Anyone? 45. Y'all got like 45 sound like a good answer? Let's roll with that one. All right, questions on this. By the way, don't forget to move the decimal here as well. So not a 5x, but we also have to move two places to get a 100x here. How many have this? The 45. Any questions on the solving? It's been a little while since we've seen decimals, so good review for us. Let's take a look at another problem here. And at your seats, I want you to write the equation for this one. What number decreased by 0.35 of itself equals 52? And what's my equation, Michael? Uh, x minus 0.35x equals 52. How many have the same equation that Michael said? X minus 0.35x equals 52. I guess technically you don't have to necessarily move the decimal twice. You could say 1 minus 0.35 class is 0.65x, especially since you have a calculator. And since your calculator can do the division for you, and you're going to need a calculator anyway, I suppose you could just say 52 divided by 0.65. But it also wouldn't hurt to move the decimal twice, twice, and twice. Either way, you're stuck using the calculator, though. What do we end up with for x, Michael? 80. How many also had 80 for your answer here? All right, questions on this word problem. All right, so something we hadn't really seen before was that itself reference. Wanted to point that out to you. Here's another one for you. And uh, we don't have an Ashley, but we have an Audrey. So, Audrey, if you'll read this for us. All right, how many unknowns do we have here? Two. Two. And uh, let me come back over here for just a second on the camera so you can see it as well. Just a quick refresher when we solve word problems with multiple unknowns, we want to start by finding how many things. And Audrey said there are two things we're solving for here. And Audrey, what are the two unknowns that we are solving for? Good, so Ashley, you're doing this with me there on your paper, and bro. And um, we need to pick one of them to be X. Let's come back over here. And uh, which one should we choose to be X, Audrey? The bro. The bro, because that's what it comes back to in the comparison. This time it's our very first sentence that compares these two to each other. Ashley is three-fourths as old as her brother. So since it comes back to brother, we should represent him as X. Once we've done that, of course, we'll represent the other unknown, Ashley, in terms of x. It said she was three-fourths as old. We should represent Ashley three-fourths x. Three x. Or three x over four would work as well. Nothing wrong with three-fourths x. Oh, how many already had that down? You already saw that one coming. The last thing we need to do, or the, well, the last major thing, is to set up the equation. That's the key step, setting up an equation based on the information. Well, what should our equation be, Audrey? Um, x plus 3x plus 4 equals 28. There we go. x plus 3x over 4 equals 28. The sum of their ages is 28. Of course, I hate fractions, so I'm just going to get rid of the fractions. I'm going to multiply everything class by 4. When I do, what's my equation going to become here, Abby? Um, 4x plus 3x equals 24. And of course, we'll combine the 4x and 3x class. 7x. 7x. And divide away the 7 probably on the calculator. And we end up with x is equal to? 16. 16. So that means who is 16 years old, class? Bro. Bro. How old is Ashley? She's 3 fourths of that, right? 1 fourth would be 3. She's 3 fourths, or it would be 4. 3 fourths of that would be 12. And does the sum of their ages equal 28 years? Yeah. So the word problem checks out. It says how old is each. Again, sometimes you only want one answer or the other. In this case, I want both. Any of you in here 16? Okay, a couple 16. Anyone 15? 17? 
25? Just kidding. All right, questions on this. Let's <laughs> take so a look at another one here. And uh, go ahead and read this one for us, if you would, Brandon. If grades of the number of students who went on a field to deny the dollars for a girl, and 240 girls students, what was the whole number of students who went on the field? All right. Um, how many unknowns do we have in this problem, Brandon? Yeah, it, it seems like two, but what are they? Right, it doesn't actually talk about boys and girls, so we obviously know that boys went, but it, all it references are, it talks about girls, and it talks about total students who actually went on a field trip. Obviously, we would not take a field trip to Niagara Falls, it's too far, but you know, people happen to live that close to the Niagara River, more power to them. Which of these unknowns, the number of girls or the number of total students, would be X in this problem, Brandon? Uh, right. What statement tells you it's total students? The very beginning says three-eighths of the number of students were girls. But a better way to think of that is girls were three-eighths of the number of students. So we're going to let students be X. How many saw that? So how would we represent girls if three-eighths of all the students who went were girls? Three-eighths X or 3X over 8. Questions on that step? We don't know how many students went. That's also, by the way, the thing that's asked in the last question, but that's not always meaning it's X. But the fact that it says that 3 eighths of the total students were girls, total students X, 3 eighths X, girls. Questions? We want to use the number we haven't used yet to make our equation. What's the number we haven't used yet, Brandon? 240. 240. Well, not and 40, 240. Um, and the 240 here, it isn't the total students. It isn't the number of boys, because boys aren't even reference class. The 240 is the number of girls. girls. So in a way, girls is an unknown, and in a way, girls is very much known. Does that make sense? We know the number of girls is 240. We also know the girls are 3 eighths the total number of students. So we, in a sense, have one unknown that could be represented two different ways. Write the statement in your notes. If you have one unknown, represented two different ways, set the two ways equal to each other. If you have one unknown represented two different ways, set the two ways equal to each other. We're going to see this several times throughout the year where one unknown is represented multiple ways and well, what's my equation? It's the two ways set equal to each other. So here of course, back to Brandon, the equation is simply If you have one unknown represented two different ways, set the two ways equal to each other. So uh, what's my equation then, Brandon, once you've got that written down? 240 equals 3x over 8. That's it. Pretty straightforward equation. Now, I could multiply everything by the LCD or... I can put this over 1 and treat it like a proportion, or I can get rid of the 3 eighths all in one step. How can I get rid of the 3 eighths of 1's class? Multiply by 8 thirds. Remember we pointed this out the other day that if you multiply by the reciprocal, divide away 3 eighths, so that's multiplying by the reciprocal, you get x by itself in one step. Of course, you'd have to multiply the 8 thirds over here as well. The 3 and the 24 become a 1 and 3 and 24 become 1 and 8. But because of the 0, it's really an 8t, right? And 8 times 80. So apparently there were 640 students who went on the trip. Questions on this word problem. A little bit different, right? Questions. Questions on this. I just want to introduce some eh, different ideas. We also work with some decimals and fractions in our word problems. All right. If you would go and take out your homework handouts now. You had some formulas on the homework handout. 
And uh, we didn't get a chance to practice these much in class. I showed several of these, but we ran out of time before we had a chance to practice. So we'll do some more practice today. But the idea of a formula is, uh, you know, plug in numbers, solve for something. Typically, a formula has one letter that's by itself. What do we call that one letter that's by itself, Genesis? The dependent variable, the other one, right? The dependent variable is by itself. So in number one class, the dependent variable is A. And number two, C. And number three, A. And number four, M. Number five, you get the idea. I. Uh, you get the idea, right? Those are the variables that are by themselves right now because they currently depend on all the other letters. What we want to do is solve for one of the other letters, which are called, Kendall, independent variables. And we're going to make the independent variable into the dependent variable. Now, besides the dependent variable and independent variables, there may also be numbers in formulas, and we see that here. Um, those numbers are referred to, Michael, as constants. Now, in number one, we really don't have a constant other than understood one, but we don't care about that. Number two, we have a constant. In fact, we have two constants, class. 2 and pi, right? Pi's value doesn't change. What about number 3? 1 half. Number 4, we have 2 and 2, right? Uh, so you know, we have some constants in these formulas as well. But the key is to solve for one of the other letters. And to solve for a letter or solve for a variable class means to get that variable by itself, all alone, isolated. So on number one, they start us with the formula A equals BH, which you might recall formula for the area of a parallelogram or of a rectangle. And uh, to solve for the H means I'm going to have to get rid of what, Genesis? The B. How do I get rid of the B? Divide it, because it's being multiplied. But what I do to one side, and so my answer is H equals A over B. How many had that answer for number one? Number two, we have the formula C equals 2 pi r, circumference of a circle. And we're solving for the radius here, Audrey. What do we need to do? Um, divide by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi on? Both. both sides. And so my answer? R equals C over 2 pi. R equals C over 2 pi. Number three, uh, we've got a fraction. I really hate fractions. They just yeah, mess with stuff. So. If we're solving for the B, what might we do first, Abby? Multiply by 2. Yeah, multiply everything by 2. There's only two things here, but multiply everything by 2 to get initially. 2A equals BH. There we go, and allow the 2s to cancel. We can leave the 1 understood. Still solving for the B, our final step would be to do what? Divide by H. Divide away the H. And there's my answer, B equals 2A over H. Uh, number 4, we have the formula M equals 2A plus 2B. It's not anything in particular, just a random formula. And we're solving for the A, uh, Michael. Uh, you need to subtract 2B. Good. Uh, with the A, we've got this 2 right here that's up against the A, and we also have a positive 2B that's separate. We also want to get rid of anything separate first, and we can get rid of it by moving it over as a negative. And you said M negative 2B mm -hmm. is equal to 2A. Uh, to finish, though, we need to now get the A by itself by dividing away the 2 from A. And from Those, that one. And the other yeah. side, right? Yeah. And so we end up with the whole side being divided by the 2, A equals M minus 2B over 2. Now, another thing you might remember, when we divide a polynomial by a monomial, we can divide these terms, and then we could divide those terms. So in theory, coming back to M negative 2B equals 2A, you could, instead of dividing both sides by 2, you could divide everything by 2. And that will give you a is equal to m halves minus b. This answer is the same thing. It's just written differently. I feel like this is easier, and I'm lazy, so I usually go with this. But technically, that's correct as well. Questions on number 4? Number 5, let's come to Maddie. We have i equals prt, simple interest formula. Solving for the r, what do we need to do? Divide away the pt. And when we divide away pt, it leaves us with the formula. R equals i over pt. And we're perfect on the first five. Perfect on the first five. Excellent. Let's go to number six. And we're solving for v. F equals mv over t. And um, what do we need to do to get the v by itself? There's a couple ways we could go here. Brandon? 
Let's multiply by two. Okay, good. We could say let's clear the fraction right up. And let's just multiply both sides by t. Cancel here to get ft, if we keep them alphabetical, is equal to mv. And then to finish getting the v by itself, divide away the m. And there would be my answer, v equals ft over m. And we have another way we could do it, maybe even faster. What about the inverse? Well, well not inverse, reciprocal. We have a V right here, there's an M over T. If we multiply by T over M, T's cancel and M's cancel. And if we multiply by T over M, that's T over M, F, where the F can move up to the numerator. And you still get FT over M equals V for your answer. So we could have done it in one step as well. How would have got that answer regardless of the way in which you solved it? Okay, question Genesis? Does it make sense? All right, let's take a look at the next one. We have uh, C is equal to 5 ninths, the quantity F negative 32. And uh, oh, I really hate parentheses. Parentheses get in the way, especially what I'm solving for is inside. The parentheses have to go, and there's two ways I could get rid of the parentheses. Maddie, I could. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. In other words, divide that fraction. Get the fraction out of there. Because after all, the only thing that's with the parentheses is the fraction. If that 5 ninths isn't there, there's no reason to have the parentheses at all. So just divide away 5 ninths, right? And again, technically division is multiplying by the reciprocal to get a 9 fifths C. Who needs parentheses now? There's nothing else here but the F minus 32. And then in one step, Maddie, Move the 32 over as a positive to get. And there we go. There is another way we could get rid of parentheses, but I don't want to do it. Thoughts? Distribute. We could, in theory, distribute. I don't want to distribute a 5 ninths. So I like this way best. How many have this answer for number 7? Did anyone try to distribute? Okay, I was about to say, bless your heart. All right, uh, let's take a look at another one. S is equal to N over 2 times A plus L. And we're solving for the N. <clears throat> what do we do here? Kendall. Um, can I, divide the A I could divide away the A plus L from both sides. And that would leave me with an S over the quantity A plus L, which is, by the way, it's already grouped because of the fraction bar is equal to n over 2. Can you multiply by 2? Multiply by a 2. And when I multiply by 2, technically at class, that's 2 over 1. So that means the 2 gets multiplied by the s to give me an answer of 2s over a plus l equals n. Nothing wrong with that. I tend to get rid of the fraction first, though, because to me, the fraction is the ugly thing. So I would probably start multiplying the 2 before I create anything else over here to get 2s equals n times a plus l. Since what you're solving for is outside, definitely don't distribute the n, right? That would be a very sad thing. Then we could divide away the a plus l. Technically, it's the same two steps, Kendall, and it gets us to the same answer, doesn't it? I just, I, I really like getting rid of fraction's because hatred problems, you know? Um, how many have this answer, though, regardless of the way in which you solved it? Okay, questions, Maddie, or Genesis? Does it make sense now? All right. Uh, looking at the next one, we've got A is equal to P times 1 plus RT. <clears throat> and we're solving for the R. And let's go to Michael. We're solving for something in the parentheses. There's a couple ways we could go here. Uh, divide the P. We eliminate the need for the parentheses if there ain't nothing with them. We need to divide away the P. They ain't nothing with them. We don't need them no more. Mm -hmm. Now what? You can also divide the T. Not yet. You can subtract the one. Good. The one is a separate term. So again, let me kind of rewrite this so we can see what we've got here. Since the one is a separate term from the R, let's move that over as a negative one. To have what on this side now? A over P minus one. Good. A over P has a something separate. Minus one, still separate term, is equal to RT. And now finally we can divide each side by T. Divide away the T from both sides. Now again, it creates this ugly complex fraction, which isn't ideal, but it works. You know, it's correct at least. And then we get an answer that looks just like this. And then we do it a slightly different way. How else could we have done this, Audrey? 
instead of dividing the p away, subtracting the one, dividing the t, what's another way we could have done this? Going back to the original problem. Anyone? We could distribute. Audrey, what would we get if we distributed? There we go, P plus PRT. Basically, this is the formula to find the amount of money you owe somebody after you've borrowed. You have to pay back what you borrowed plus interest, right? So P principal plus interest. Um, what would we do at this point, Audrey, to uh, finish getting the R by itself? Good, move the P over as a negative, P or subtract the P to get PRT. This answer looks just a little bit nicer because you don't have the complex fraction. Technically, it means the exact same thing. But did anyone get an answer that looks like this for homework? Okay, that's what Michael had. All right, questions on this. And then the last one from the homework was the formula for a trapezoid's area B equals one half H times B plus B prime. And we are solving for the B and Genesis. Yeah, I get I multiply everything. And by everything, this A is a thing. And all of this is actually a thing also. If I multiply the two, the point of it is to knock out the two, the two in the bottom, right? So that, leave the one understood, I've just got H times B plus B prime. But over here I now have, I like getting rid of the fraction. Just, life is easier without fractions. All right, now what? Um, divide, away the H. divide away the H. Of course, technically here as well, that's why it cancels. And now that the H is gone, do I need these parentheses anymore? There's nothing there. I mean, technically, you say there's a positive, but if that's the case, you just remove them, right? Still solving for the B, one last step. Divide away the B prime. Is the B prime being multiplied by the B? Subtract. Subtract it or move it over and it becomes a negative. negative as a separate term. So what's my answer for B then? 2A over H negative B prime equals And there we go. This is one way to do it. How many got this answer for this last one? And I'm doing a slightly different way. Maddie's like, I didn't get that answer, but I'm not raising my hand. I'll go to Maddie anyway. Maddie, what's another way we could have approached this problem, solving for the B? Right, I would. Yeah, I assume you still would have started perhaps by multiplying the two, right? So let's let's get rid of the one half. But then instead of dividing the H's genesis, then distribute the H. To get two A is equal to. There we go, still solving for the B right here. Now what would we do? To get... Is equal to BH, still solving for the B. From... And from... The other side, there we go, and divide the H away there. This is another way to write the same answer. Again, it's not a different answer, it just looks different. And it would happen to have that answer by any chance. Okay, I was wondering if that's what you had done, but apparently not. Questions on this handout. Was anyone perfect? 10 for 10? Now several of you. How about 9 for 10 just missed one? 8 for 10 just missed two? All right, any questions on the one or ones we missed? All right, if you have any space left on the back of the handout um, and you're working on there, then you can write these down there or you can go in your notes. If you haven't written on the handout, I'd love to collect it back and not have to reprint next year. Thank you, Genesis. Thank you, Maddie. Favorite students. All right. Um, <clears throat> don't get used to it. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> All right. Um, Michael's like, yeah, that's a truth. I was a favorite student yesterday. <laughs> y'all, did y'all, was it your class that read the poem, The Constant Lover? Yeah, yeah they're 11th and 12th grade class. Yeah. They, anyway. Mm -hmm. Out of fun, I'd love to be three whole days together. <laughs> anyway, it's great, great literature. Anyway, all right. I got a formula F equals MA. I want you to solve for the A. I've got P equals M over V. Technically, it's a lowercase Greek row, but we'll just call it P. Uh, solving for the M. Solving for G. 
Apparently the guy was pretty proud of himself for liking the same girl for three days in a row. Wonder how she felt getting that poem. <laughs> Real secure, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wrote that making fun of someone else. I mean, surely. <laughs> He's like, I'll probably love you three more if it proved fair weather. If everything goes well, I might even love you a few more days. <laughs> he had to be making fun of somebody. He's like writing about junior hires or something. I don't know. Brandon looks really embarrassed. I, I didn't mean to hit a nerve. No. <laughs> very, very sad. Sorry. Uh. Uh. Mr. Nadasky goes where angels fear to tread. <laughs> Not that wise. <laughs> Most teachers, this is dangerous territory. Let's stay away. Mr. Nadasky's like, ooh, let's open this door and see what happens. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, you lose some, you lose some, I always say. I always say that. I really do. You lose some, you lose some. Can I try and speak? <laughs> Speaking of losing some, Brandon, on the first one. <laughs> what did you do to get the A by itself? To find a way to To get A equals? F, -M. F over. F over M. There's a big difference. Good. On the next one, what do we do to get the M by itself? M -m Maddie. <laughs> well, by by V to get what? <laughs> Forgot about that, sorry. <laughs> M equals PV. Uh, how many have this answer on the second one? On the third one, I'm going to take a little bit more here, Genesis. What do I do to get the G by itself? <laughs> um, what? Um, it is the letter G? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Name change in her future. <laughs> her marriage only oh. changes the last names. <laughs> multiply it by two. Absolutely. Let's multiply it by two and get rid of that ugly fraction. Get two d equals gt squared, right? And then what? And multiply by two. I mean, divide it by two. And so our answer. There we go. On the next one, Kendall, what do I need to do to get V by itself? To get. Good. How many got these ones correct? Questions? On the last one here, last ones here, Michael, what do I do to get the W by itself? You got to divide by 2. All right, to get. Uh, P over 2 equals. L plus W. And we don't need the parentheses anymore, so then just subtract the L. To get P over 2 minus L equals W. Good. How many got that answer? Did it that way? Anyone do it another way? Did you distribute? What was your answer? Um, w equals P minus 2L over 2. And that answer would also be correct had you distributed. The two would have gotten this answer. And else get that answer. All right, questions? What about down here? Uh, what do we need to do here, Audrey? Solve for H. Divide the two by one. All right, to get um, initially. A over two by one equals R plus H. And then just subtract R. To get um, H equals. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. A over 2 pi r minus r equals h. Laziness rules the day. All right. Uh, anyone else get the answer exactly that way? Anyone distribute the 2 pi r? It's a little ghastly at that point. It would work, right? Um, you could distribute it a equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, which is actually the way you memorized it for surface area of a cylinder back when you were in junior high. 
and then uh, bless your heart, we'll subtract away the two pi r squared, and then we'll divide away the two pi r, and there's our answer that way. So we could have got an answer that looks like that as well. Questions on solving formulas for an independent variable. Feel like we got it? All right, next section in your notes. So let's continue talking about these literal equations. But of course, not every literal equation is a formula. Those are the ones you're going to see the most. So I want to spend some time on those. But uh, in general, you can have really any kind of equation that just has extra letters in it. And uh, the question always is, what letter are you solving for? Right? Because there's multiple letters you could solve for. As a general rule in this class, we'll solve for x if not otherwise indicated. So write this equation down. AX minus C equals 5. AX minus C equals 5. If we want to get the X by itself, the first thing I should do, Genesis, is to get X by itself. Good. If there's an A and a negative C, but the negative C is a separate term, so let's get rid of it by making it a positive C on the other side. Scribble it out, and then what? Divide away the A. I'll scribble it out over there, divide it away over there, and there's my answer. I do it real easily, mostly in our head, just with a few markings there. Questions on that? Pretty straightforward. Until you come to something like this, MX minus NX equals R, and you're supposed to solve for X. Well, if these were numbers, you would combine, right? But you can't combine an mx and a negative nx because they're not like terms. And if you're solving for x, singular, but there's two of them, what do we do? Factor. Yeah. You might remember this from Algebra 1, but you can factor out an x to be left with Michael x uh, times a minus n equals r. And now notice there's only one x. You can't solve for x when there's two of them. So here's your key. Write this down. If you have more than one x term, if you have more than one x term, get them all together on one side and factor out the x. If you have more than one x term, get them all together on one side, which that was already done for you here, and factor out the x. Now yeah, there's only one x to solve for. What do I have to do to solve for the x now, Abby? Uh, divide away the n minus n. We're going to divide the entire quantity m negative n from both sides. And there's my answer. x equals r over m negative n. Questions on this? I'm going to remember this from Algebra 1. For some of you, it's been a little while. Okay, some of you not as much. That's okay. Believe me, you'll get uh, you get back in the swing of things very quickly here. Write this down if you want. 6ax negative 9 is equal to 15x positive 3. Once again, we have two terms with x's. Normally, I'd say get rid of the little one, but how do you know which one's the little one, right? You got a 6ax, you got a 15x. There's no telling which one's the little one. Um, so just get rid of one of them. Move them so they are together. So we'll let the little, I mean, Kendall, pick. Which of these would you like to move? The 15x? All right, so let's move the 15x over here, and it will become a negative 15x. Notice the x's are now all together. Now I'll be able to factor them. But, class, we're going to kind of kind of like at the beginning of the school year, we go into Hodges Hall for lunch on that first day, and all the guys sit at one table, and all the girls sit at the other row of tables, right? And then over time, of course, we've, we've integrated, right? But initially, we sort of segregated us by nature, girls and guys. Maybe you go on a youth retreat. All right, guys on one side of the chapel, girls on the other side of whatever. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to get the x's on one side, and anything that's not an x goes on the other side. In this case, the negative 9 is going to move over class and become a positive, positive nine. 9, which it's going to be like to the 3 where they could combine and just get 12. So we're going to get all the x's on one side, all the non-x's on the other. And now, so we just have one single x class we have to factor. I'm going to pull out, well, I can pull out more than just an x here. What else could I factor out? A 3x. Leaving me with what in parentheses here, Brandon? 
2a minus 5. I mean 5. There we go. So we have a 3x times 2a minus 5. And to get the x by itself, what do I have to do now? Uh, Maddie? And the 2a minus 5 on both sides. Basically, anything that's with the x has to be divided away, so I just have an x all by itself. Now, when I divide 12 by 3 times the quantity 2a negative 5, there's a little bit I can do to simplify. Anyone? 3 out of the 3 and 12 to get 4, four over 2a minus 5. Technically a 1, but you know, too lazy to write it. And there's my answer. x equals 4 over 2a minus 5. Questions on this one? Write this one down if you would, please. b cubed plus ax equals a cubed plus bx. <clears throat> Once again, we have multiple x's, and you can't get x singular by itself unless you get all the x's on one side, all the non-x's on the other, and then factor out the x. Now, it doesn't matter which side. We could move whichever x we want to move just so long as they're together. Uh, Genesis, which one do you want to move? The bx? All right, let's bring the bx over here as a negative to get. But at the same time we're moving the x's to the left, what needs to move to the right because it don't fit in no more? The b cubed. And when we move that over, it becomes, so I end up with, there we go. Now we've got all the x's segregated out from the non-x's, if you will, and uh, we're going to get x by itself. So class, we've got to factor. In this case, it's just the x that factors out to leave me with in parentheses class a minus b. But my suggestion would be this. Factor the other side as well if it can. Now, 12 didn't factor. R didn't factor. But a cubed minus b cubed factors class. That is a difference of cubes, which factors into a binomial times a trinomial. And um, what's the binomial going to be here, Michael? And uh, the trinomial is going to be uh, a squared plus a b plus b squared. You say, oh, we're not done with factoring yet? Oh, no. No, we're not done with factoring. All right, and uh, now we're able to finish up. We get the x by itself by doing what class? Well, technically, by dividing both sides by a minus b. And, of course, they cancel here, but they also cancel over here. And when they do, that means there's a particular value A cannot equal. A cannot equal B because A minus B can't equal 0. So we have a qualifying statement on a reduced answer. And no, we're not done with factoring. Questions on that problem? Questions on that? All right, we'll call that good for today. I had a couple more things I wanted to show you, but, you know, tomorrow. Uh, no homework this evening. Trust you'll have a restful evening. The church services tonight and then tomorrow. We will pick back up with some literal equations. Separating the X's from the non-X's. Factoring all that fun stuff. Have a wonderful rest of your day. When the bell rings, you will be dismissed.